The Dead March on Abney by Geraldine Barella. Celia pulled her robes closer and adjusted her headscarf, the desert air cool and crisp. The night presented a scythe-shaped moon, a sliver that cast little light. It suited her fine. She could almost disappear, escape the soul-crushing humiliation she'd just suffered in the Temple of Abney. Excruciating! How dare they laugh at me like that? Running the notched stick along the bell bangles that decorated her left forearm from wrist to elbow, she guided her herd of Podmora through the night, jingling and jangling and clicking her tongue. A thicket of golden spine cactus lay ahead, over the dunes away, a good distance back from the Sea of Salt in the Depi River Valley. She'd herd her animals there and watch over them while they grazed. The placid Podmora snuffled and grunted and chewed on their cud. Their wide, soft padded hooves distributed their considerable weight as they plodded through the fine desert sand. They were four humped beasts that needed copious amounts of food and water, getting their fill from the fleshy parts of the cactus, as well as from the flowers that bloomed at night, in order to survive and maintain their production of milk. Celia sighed. The cacti had been plentiful last evening. Would they still be there tonight? or replaced by another mound of sand. She could only pray to goddesses Rua and Astra if they would. Please hear me, dear sisters. Herding her animals up over the rise of the sand dunes and down into the Depi River Valley, Celia squinted into the distance, her enhanced night vision a definite advantage in helping to find the cacti her animals needed. Yes, they're still here. The shifting sands changed the landscape on a daily basis and bearings were hard to maintain. She ran the notched stick along her bell bangles and the Podmora ambled forward. Aside from an increased ability to heal, a huge help when a Podmora stood on her foot, crushing the fine bones of her toes 10 years ago, enhanced vision and a higher level of stamina in dealing with the harsh environment of her desert world than most, Celia still hadn't discovered any significant powers. If she were a demigod, surely she'd have some. She'd lain awake on many a morning in her cool underground apartment, waiting for sleep to take her, while racking her brain to work out what form her role in the prophecy might take. But nothing, as yet, had reared its head.